Third contest winners. Yes, folks, later we'll announce the Ford winners in the third big jingle contest. So listen while new post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, why do you want us all here in the workshop? Because, Patsy, this is where the great Canestro cooked up his most famous illusions. And it ought to be a good place for me to pull a couple of tricks, too. Now, don't tell me you're going to pull rabbits out of a hat. Rabbits? No, Patsy. A killer, I hope. Well, all good things come to an end sometime, and the Old Dutch Cleanser Contest comes to an end this coming Saturday at midnight. This is the last week to enter and win a brand new 1948 Ford sedan or a share in the big cash prizes. If you've put it off so far, enter now. If you've entered before, enter again because your chance of winning is still just as good as anybody else's. And it's so easy to win. All you do is supply a winning last line for this jingle. Listen. For faster cleaning, with new ease, just say, new post-war, old Dutch please. With activated seismatite, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Remember, all we want is a last line, something that rhymes with seismatite. Get a pencil and paper handy, and later on, I'll give you a sample last line to go by. Just a few minutes' time might win you a brand new super deluxe Ford V8 four-door sedan or a crisp new $10 bill. Somebody's going to win, and it might as well be you. Get your entry in now, tonight. Each entry must be accompanied by the windmill pictures from two labels of Old Dutch Cleanser. Mail to Old Dutch Cleanser, Box U, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Box U, Chicago 77, Illinois. Entries must be postmarked before midnight this coming Saturday. It's your last chance, so get going. And now, the case of the magic rope. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Tonight, at the Elton Theater... Magicians from all over the country will compete for the Fulton Award, a $10,000 prize for the best illusion of the year. But the greatest magician of them all, Carlos Canesto, will not be present. Confined to a wheelchair since his almost fatal accident last year, Canestro sits in his workshop talking to Alma Whiting, once his assistant, now a leading contender for the Fulton Award. <laughs> you know, Alma, I suggested the idea of the Magician's Award to Mr. Fulton myself. What? I did not think he would take me seriously. Why not? He can afford it. With all his millions, he certainly can. Funny how so many people take up magic as a hobby, isn't it? Uh, with Fulton, it is more than a hobby. It is an obsession. But all he's ever learned is a little sleight of hand. But let him get on a stage, and he's as happy as if he had made another million dollars in the stock market. Oh, Carlos, uh, I've simply got to win that $10,000 prize tonight. Uh-huh. Yeah, perhaps you should have this... That piece of rope? That piece of rope, my dear, will mystify the world. It is the most spectacular illusion of my whole career. Oh? How does it work? No, 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 no. That is Canestro's secret. When I return to the theater... You? I w you expect to work again? But of course I do. I'll be out of this wheelchair very soon now. Well, I... Uh, well, that, that's good news. Alma, you will tell me what happened to me the night of the accident... It was the equipment, wasn't it? The equipment was all right, Carlos. You slipped, that's all. But I couldn't have. I had done that trick a thousand times. Why did I fall through that trap door, Alma? Why? Why? Oh, Carlos, Carlos, you mustn't get excited. It's bad for you. See how your hands are trembling. Here. Let me hold them in mind for a moment. There, now. Uh, oh. Huh? I beg your pardon. Uh, Mrs. Canestro. Carlos, dinner is ready. Wheel yourself into the dining room, will you? I want to say something to Alma. Very well, Catherine. Come back again soon, Alma. What I have to say won't take long, Alma. Mrs. Canestro, what you saw didn't mean a thing. I don't want to hear any lies. You've been in love with my husband for years. Oh, that's ridiculous. If you weren't so crazy, I told jealous... you never to come here. Now get out. And don't come back or... Or what? 
You'd better be pretty nice to me, Mrs. Canestro, or I might tell the newspapers exactly why Carlos fell that night. And you wouldn't want that, would you? How you doing, Patsy? That's the end of it, Nick. Ah, 25 after 7. How'd you like to take in a stage show? Oh, well, that would be wonderful. I haven't been to the theater in months. Oh, I'll answer it. You get your hat. Right. Nick Carter speaking. Who? Oh, yes. I see. Yes, I'll, I'll be right over. Oh, Nick. No show? Nope. Not even any dinner. That was Mrs. Canestro, wife of the great magician. Well, what did she want? She wanted to tell me that her husband's been stabbed. Been dead for at least two hours. Mrs. Canestro, when did you find the body? Only a few minutes ago. I opened the door and there he was with that knife in his chest. You ever seen this knife before? Yes, it was part of Carlos' magic act. He kept it here in the workshop with his other props. I suppose you've notified the police. No, not yet. I did not know what to do. I'll call them, Nick. All right, uh, but uh, g- get me a clean envelope first, will you, Patsy? Why? Did you find something? Yes. Canestro evidently tried to put up a fight. Oh? The fingernails in his right hand are broken as if something had been torn out of his hand. And these bits of fiber were under his nails. What? They look like the stuff they make rope out of. That's what I thought. Here, put them in the envelope. Uh-huh. The rope trick, Mr. Carter, it is gone. What rope trick? It is an illusion Carlos was working on. He wouldn't tell me how it worked, but he said it was the most spectacular trick he'd ever created. It was here on this desk only this afternoon. Ah, a trick as good as that would be worth a fortune to any magician. That must have been what he was shouting about. Shouting? What do you mean? Well, we had an early dinner, and I went up to my room about six. Yes? And a few minutes later, I heard Carlos screaming at someone. He was in a rage. I didn't think anything about it at the time. Carlos was always excitable. You remember what he said? He was shouting, No, you cannot have it. No one can have it. And you haven't any idea whom he was talking to? No, I haven't. People were always dropping in. He'd go to the door in his wheelchair and let them in himself. That is how Alma Whiting got in this afternoon. Alma Whiting? Yes. Isn't she a magician, too? Yes, she was. She was here this afternoon. Maybe I better talk to her. You will find her at the Elton Theater competing for the Fulton Award. Say, I read about the Fulton Award in the paper today. Yes. It's a $10,000 prize for the best magic trick of the year, isn't it? Yeah, maybe... It could not have been, Alma. She left an hour before this happened. Just the same, Mrs. Canestro. She may be able to give us some information. Patsy, get that police call through right away. They're going to see a show tonight after all. I beg your pardon, Mr. Fulton? Who let you into my box? I distinctly told the... My name's Nick Carter. Uh, Nick Carter, the detective? That's right. This is my secretary, Patsy Bowen. How do you do? Well, I'm uh, happy to meet you both, I'm sure, but uh, what are you doing here? I'd like to talk with one of your performers, Alma Whiting. Thought perhaps you could tell me when the best time would be. But Elmer's on in a few minutes. Is it something urgent? It is, if you call murder urgent. Murder? Carlos Canestro was stabbed to death about 6.30 this evening. Canestro? Stabbed? I, I can't believe it. Sorry, but he was. And Miss Whiting seems to be the last person who saw him alive. Mr. Fulton, tell me, have, you, have any of the magicians done a rope trick here tonight? A rope trick? No, no. Canestro dead? The greatest magician the world has ever known dead. Well... Can you take us backstage and introduce us to Miss Whiting? Oh, certainly. I'll take you back just as soon as Marvello finishes his act. He's nearly through. I have to stay and judge the contest tricks, you know. Thank you. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, watch closely, please. Oh, this is the contest trick coming I up now. I call your attention to this very familiar object I hold in my hand. A common, ordinary piece of rope. Hey, Nick. Do you suppose that rope could be the one? I don't know, but I hope to find out before long. Watch a step, Miss Bowen. Uh It's uh, pretty dark backstage here. Oh, there's Alma. Alma, 
Alma. Yes, Mr. Fulton. Uh, this is Mr. Carter and Miss Bowen, Alma. Hello. How do you do? Alma, do you something do? terrible has happened. Canestro is dead. Is what? He was stabbed about 6.30 this evening, Miss Whiting. Who killed him? That's what we're trying to find out. You mind telling me where you were at that time? I was right here in the theater rehearsing. I suppose you can prove that. Yes, of course I can. Marvella was here, too, and he saw me. If you think you're going to put the blame on, on me, you're out of your mind. But what's the audience laughing at? Oh, that's the comedy magician going on after Marvello's act. Oh. Uh, do you want to talk to Marvello, too, Mr. Carter? Yes, I do. I'll uh, get him right away. Mr. Carter, I don't understand this. Why would anybody want to kill Colas? Well, Mrs. Canestro thinks it was to steal a magic trick he just perfected. That's ridiculous, and she knows it. Nobody who knew Collis would do a thing like that. Why not? Because he... Well, I, I mean, they'd know they couldn't get away with it. Why not? Look, I've got to check my props. I'll talk to you when the act's over. Is that all right? Okay, thanks. Uh, what do you think, Nick? There's something she isn't telling us, Bessie. I don't know whether she's afraid of me or... Hey, I thought this was a magic show. What's the idea of the clown act? Comedy relief, I suppose. Kill time while they strike one act and set up the next. Uh, Mr. Carter, this is uh, Marvello, one of our best magicians. Uh, Is it true the great Canestro is dead? Yes. Uh, You'll excuse me, won't you, Mr. Carter? I have to get back to my box before Elmer's act starts. Sure, go right ahead, Mr. Fulton. Marvello, what time did you get to the theater tonight? About six o'clock. Anyone see you here at six? Certainly. I spoke to Miss Whiting as I came in. I see. You're her alibi and she's yours. What are you getting at? A solution to a murder, I hope. Avella, where's the rope you used tonight? Well, I have it right here in my coat pocket. That's funny. Now, don't tell me it's disappeared. I... Uh, uh, no, 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 of course not. I... Oh, here it is in my left pocket. I thought it was in the right one, that's all. I see. Mind if I borrow it? Borrow my rope. For what? I'm sending it to the police laboratory. Police? Maybe this is the rope that'll kill Canestro's killer. Nick, where have you been? Alma Whiting's act's almost over. Morning, Matty. Asked him to send an officer over here to pick up that rope. Oh, are they going to make a comparison test? Yeah. And if those fibers we found under Canestro's fingernails are from the same rope that Marvello used, it'll show up... Nick, under... look. What? You may have another rope for the sergeant to pick up. Look what Alma's doing out there on the stage. Yeah, what's he doing up there on that platform? Let's listen. Ladies and gentlemen, your own representatives from the audience have examined this rope to be sure there is no trickery. They themselves have tied the rope firmly around my neck. Two rope tricks tonight. You have eh? seen the rope tested with a heavy sandbag. You have seen with your own eyes that it does not reach within eight feet of the floor. Hey, is she going to jump off that platform with the rope around her neck? That's it. Of course, as soon as she falls, she'll be out of sight behind that screen. I'm glad it's her instead of me. My hands are securely tied as well as my feet. Looks like a good trick. This Mm. too has been done by the committee from the audience. If it's Canestra's rope trick, though, she may find this is only a rehearsal for the real thing. And now, the leap of death. Nick, she jumped. Yeah. Well, what now? Well, there shouldn't be a dead pause like this. Why doesn't she come out from behind that screen or whatever she's supposed to do? I don't know. Unless something's gone wrong. Look, those men. They're running back at the screen. And Mr. Fulton's coming up over the footlights. Betsy, something has oh. happened. Come on. Yep. Yeah. Come you! Bring down the curtain, you massive! You there! Yeah. Pull that screen out of the way! Oh, Nick, look! Wait, Scott. The trick didn't work. She's dead. Oh! <laughs> At the end of a rope, the rope which she hoped would win her the $10,000 Fulton Award swings the lifeless body of Alma Whiting. We'll see what happens in just a minute. Well, folks, this is your last chance to get in on the Old Dutch Cleanser Jingle Contest. The deadline is midnight this coming Saturday, so get going now. And wham! Maybe you'll be the winner of a brand new 1948 Super Deluxe 4D8 four-door sedan just for thinking up a last line to this jingle. For faster cleaning, with new ease, just say, new post-war, old Dutch please, with activated seismatite, 
Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. You give us a last line only, something to rhyme with seismatite. Get your pencil now, and I'll give you a sample. Ready? Both sink and tub come shiny bright. That's not a winning last line, just a sample. Get a handy entry blank from your dealer or use plain paper. Mail to Old Dutch Cleanser, Box U, Chicago 77, Illinois. Got that? Box U, Chicago 77, Illinois. Include windmill pictures from two labels of Old Dutch with each entry. Any resident of continental United States may enter except Cudahy employees, their advertising agency, or families. Entries are judged on originality, suitability, and aptness. Must be the work of contestants and submitted in their own name. Judge's decision final, all entries become Old Dutch property. Duplicate prizes for ties. Remember, Saturday midnight is the deadline. Get your entry in now. Now, back to the case of the magic rope. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. As the police clear the theater, the body of Alma Whiting is lowered to the stage, and Nick Carter begins his investigation. Dead, all right. Her neck's broken. But, Nick, what happened? What went wrong? I don't know. Hey, does anybody here know this trick? Yeah. How it was supposed to work? Yes, yes, I do. Oh. Who are you? I'm Sam Foster. I do the comedy clown act. Well, what was the trick she tried to do? Well, she was supposed to jump off the platform onto the stage. But the rope was too short for her to reach the stage. I was watching when they tested it with the sandbag. I know, but there's about five foot of slack concealed in that crossbar the rope hangs from. Oh. Alma could release it by stepping on a foot switch on the platform. Then when she hit the floor, she could grab the rope and yank it tight with her hands to make it look as though she was suspended in midair. Uh-huh. The audience couldn't see her behind the screen, of course. But her hands were tied. Oh, no, no, no. She got them loose during the patter before she jumped. Now, my part of the act was to come up through the trap door in the stage and take her place. Oh, I see. Then she'd step out in front, pull away the screen, and instead of Alma being suspended there, the audience would see me in this clown suit hanging from the noose by my feet. The whole thing took only about five seconds. Then the trouble must have been with that foot switch that was supposed to release the extra rope. Yeah. Something must have gone wrong with it. Oh. Show me that switch, will you? Sure, sure. It works by electricity. Here. See this wire running up the back of the platform to the... Hey, look. Nick, the wire's been caught. Well, for the second time tonight, Patsy, we're face to face with murder. <sighs> Nick, what's the idea of coming back here to Canestro's house? Remember what Alma Whiting said? That no one who knew Canestro would have killed him to get the rope trick? Yes, but... I don't know what she meant by it. Neither do I, but I think perhaps Mrs. Canestro does. Hmm? Why, Mr. Carter... Sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Canestro. Please, not now. Come back tomorrow. I'm sorry, but this can't wait. Please. Oh, but Nick's trying to help you, Mrs. Canestro. Nobody can help me. No, Carlos is gone. Dead. Maybe I should be glad he's at peace now. No more suffering. No more... No more what? Had he been ill? No. No, except for the lameness, his health was perfect. What was wrong, then? His mind? His mind? Who said anything about his mind? Well, Alma Whiting told me that... Alma Whiting, I might have known. Look, Mrs. Canestro, your husband was a famous man, a public figure. You can't hide important facts about a man like that. But I, I had to. His public knew him as the great Canestro, a name that meant as much in the theater as Bernhard Caruso, Pavlo. Of course it I did. I could not shatter that illusion. I could not let the world know that the great Canestro had lost his mind. Oh, that's awful. So that's what Alma meant by saying that anyone who knew Canestro wouldn't steal his trick. Alma knew. That is what caused his accident. His mind snapped during the performance that night and he fell. Alma is the only one who knows. You say no one else suspected your husband's condition? No. He always talked rationally when he had visitors. He'd boast about the new illusions he was creating. Poor, pitiful little tricks that wouldn't fool the baby. I knew his rope trick was no good, but I... No, someone's at the door. I'll go. Why, uh, 
Hello, Carter. Marvello and I stopped by to see whether we could do anything for Mrs. Canestro. I'm glad you did, Mr. Fulton. Come on in. You too, Marvello. Oh, thank you. Oh, Patsy, will you and Mrs. Canestro come into the workshop here, please? I want to try an experiment. Of course, Nick. An experiment? Don't tell me you're going to try to produce rabbits out of a hat, Mr. Carter. Rabbits? No, Marvello. I'm going to try to produce a murderer. <laughs> You mean you got us all here in the workshop just to tell us Canestro's rope trick was worthless, Mr. Carter? Well, I thought you might be interested in knowing it was worth about 50 cents, the cost of the rope itself. Then that proves I did not steal it. You saw my rope trick. You heard how the audience applauded. My Marvello, I got a report from the police laboratory on that rope you used tonight. The fibers match those I found under Canestro's fingernails perfectly. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that your rope is the one that was stolen out of this room early this evening. The rope somebody killed Carlos Canestro for. No. No, I did not do it. It is a lie. I'll tell you who killed them. Mrs. Canestro did it. What? She was wildly jealous of Alma and Carlos. Everybody in the profession knew it. That is a lie. Then, after she killed him, it would have been easy enough for her to sneak backstage and cut the wire on that foot switch. A good theory. Except for one thing. What's that? Alma Whiting left me to check her props just before I talked to you, Marvello. And she certainly wouldn't have overlooked testing anything as important as that switch. Her life depended on it. Uh, naturally not. All right, but... then. The wire was cut after she tested it. In the last two or three minutes before she started her act. And at that time, we were all standing within a few feet of the platform that contained the switch. If Mrs. Canestro had been there, I'd have seen her. So you're trying to put the blame on me, huh? No, I'm not. You were talking to me all during that time. Then Marvello couldn't have done it. No, he couldn't. And nobody else was there except the stagehands. Well? I think we can count them out, Mr. Fulton. They'd have no reason to kill either Alma or Canestro. But that does not leave anyone but to... Nick, watch him. He's getting away. Stay where you are, Fulton. Carter, put away that gun. You don't seriously think that a man in my position... I don't think, Fulton. I know. Here, Patsy, you hold the gun while I frisk him. But this is ridiculous. I could buy and sell Canestro a hundred times. Why should I steal anything from him? Because there are some things that money can't buy. And that rope trick was one of them. You're being silly. Am I? You're crazy about magic, Fulton. And when you couldn't buy that trick, you killed Canestro to get it. Has he got a gun, Nick? No, there's nothing on him. Keep him covered while I call a police car. Uh Uh-huh. Police headquarters? And hurry. Oh, Patsy. Yes, Nick? Patsy, uh... Well, look at me for a minute. Yes, Nick? Can you see any... Thanks! He got the gun away from me. Yes, thanks for looking at Carter instead of me, Miss Bowen. Now put down that phone, Carter. Okay. Guess I was kind of dumb, wasn't I? Yes, you were, and I'm in command now. But you killed Canestro, didn't you, Fulton? Yes, you were right about that. I thought so. I've always wanted to own one great trick, one real illusion that no one else had. So I tried to buy the rope trick from him. But he laughed at me, said his trick was much too good for a mere beginner like me. I flew into a rage... And grabbed the knife off the desk and stabbed him. Yes. He shouldn't have laughed. And after you found out the rope trick wasn't worth anything, you tried to put the blame on Marvello by planting the rope on him, didn't you? Naturally. When I brought Marvello across the stage to you, I took the rope he'd used out of his right coat pocket and put Canestro's rope in his left pocket. So it was you who tried to frame me. Yes, Marvello. Even Canestro couldn't have done a neater bit of sleight of hand than that. What about Alma, Fulton? When I switched the ropes on Marvello, I looked up and saw her watching me, so there was nothing else I could do. Oh. All right, what's your next trick? A disappearing act? Exactly. I'm going to lock you all in here while I take my leave. Stand away from that door, Carter. Sorry, Fulton, I'm not moving. Get away from that door, I'll put a bullet in you. You're not leaving this room, Fulton. Oh, Nick, please, he means it. I know he does. And so do I. All right, if that's the way you want it... While the others stand by, dumbfounded, Fulton at point-blank range fires his revolver directly at Nick Carter's heart. We'll see what happens in just a minute. Now, ladies, the margarine color problem is solved. Mixing bowl mess ended by new Dell Rich Easy Color Pack Margarine. To color, just knead the bag. No tax on your time, energy, or budget. And Dell Rich naturally tastes better, fresher, because its delicate country sweet flavor is sealed in. A new American favorite. 
Now for the conclusion of the case of the magic rope. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. In the workshop of Carlos Canestro, world-famous magician, J.B. Fulton makes a desperate attempt to escape as he points a gun at Nick's heart and says... Get away from that door, Carter. I'll put a bullet in you. You're not leaving this room, Fulton. All right, if that's the way you want to... <coughs> what the... All right. You through playing with that gun, Fulton? You are. Please notice that I've got you covered with a revolver that shoots real bullets. Oh, Nick, for love of Pete, what happened? That revolver Fulton has only shoots blank cartridges. What? I picked it up here in the workshop. It must be the gun Carlos used in his act. I guess it was, Mrs. Canestro, but Fulton didn't know it. Why, you dirty... Skip it, Fulton. All right, Patsy. Call headquarters and tell him to come here and pick up Fulton the Great. Nick, when are you going to tell me about that gun trick? Oh, that? Why, there's nothing to it, Patsy. Huh? Haven't you ever seen a magician have somebody shoot a gun at him at close range? Uh, not until I saw Fulton do it to you. Well, the magician announces what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Then he gets people up on the stage to examine the gun. Army officers, if possible. And it's a real gun? Certainly it is. But after the gun's been examined, the magician's assistant makes a quick switch. Oh, I get it. The gun that fires blanks is substituted for the real gun. That's it. And that gun has no hole in the barrel for the bullet to come out of. Well, I sure wish I'd known all that when I was holding that gun on Fulton. <laughs> you see, I didn't have a nickel's worth of proof that Fulton was guilty, Patsy. So I had to trick him into a confession. I've learned from experience that a murderer talks a lot more freely with a gun in his hand. Well, he certainly talked plenty. <laughs> I guess it only goes to prove the truth of the old saying. Oh, what old saying is that? Why, give a man enough rope and he'll hang himself. <laughs> And now, the winners of the four 1948 Super Deluxe Ford V8 four-door sedans in the third new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser Jingle Contest, which closed March 13th. Well, Nick, are you going to make the awards? Am I? Mike, I've been looking forward to this all week. Here are the folks who get those brand new 1948 Fords. Eileen Brassfield of 221 Emerson Avenue, Aspinwall, Pennsylvania. Mrs. Helen Hill McWilliams, in care of E.S. West of 167 Park Street, East Orange, New Jersey. Mrs. Robert L. Perry of 2314 West Adams Street, Phoenix, Arizona. And Mrs. Helen Jane Stage of 6926 Parnell Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. And let me add that I hope these lucky people get as much pleasure driving their Fords as I had in awarding them. Yes, to all these Ford and other prize winners, congratulations. And remember, we'll have more winners next week, so be sure to listen then. And that reminds me, Nick, what about next week's adventure? Well, Mike, you might call it a story about pirates, the modern kind, who operate on the highways instead of on the high seas. Are you referring to the thugs who robbed those big motor freight trucks? Uh-huh, and Mike... We'd still be locked in the cellar of that abandoned brewery if Nick hadn't figured out a perfectly fantastic way to escape. What do you call the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Martyred Rat. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor, and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Evelyn Goodman and Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silburn. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.